going on guys it's luke bringing you my ownership reaction for DraftKings in the wyndham championship this weekend we're going to be covering my top three fades and sleeper picks for this week's DraftKings contest to help you guys make some lineups before tomorrow morning um, we're going to be identifying some of the guys being a little bit overhyped those are going to be the fades and of course the guys being a little bit overlooked for this week are going to be my sleeper picks if you guys are new to the channel we're going to be implementing my data-based approach as always on top of the video content that i post here i also give you guys access to my data-based approach on my patreon page on my pga projections page you get projections for all the players in every pga tour event that we have on the season on um, this week obviously for the Wyndham championship you have access to all 153 golfers not just their projected points you also get access to my custom model rankings their ownership rankings whether they're in my player pool also access to my discord server where you can ask questions about any specifics that you have it's only a dollar to join um, the link is in the description for you guys so make sure to take advantage um, also before we hop into the fades and sleepers let me know in the comments who your biggest fade is this week um, I just want you guys to post that before we hop into mine so that we can see what yours is. Um, without further ado, though, let's hop into my fades for the Wyndham Championship. At number three for my fades, we have Johnny Vegas at $7,800. He's going to be owned in 14.18% of lineup, somewhere around there. And he comes in number 55 in my model rankings this week, so not very good. Um, obviously, he's been coming in with good form, has a lot of good finishes of late. Um, even looked good at the Olympics as well. Um, but even during that hot stretch of golf, he's only been hitting 53% of fairways. If you guys haven't seen my course preview to this point at Sedgefield Country Club, there are a lot of demanding tee shots. You have to be very accurate off of the tee. And if you don't, you're, you're going to be in quite a bit of trouble. So while Johnny Vegas has gotten away with that lack of driving accuracy, he's not going to be able to do that this week at the Wyndham Championship. And so I think he's in a spot of regression with the putter. Um, he's been putting excellent of late, but if you guys know Johnny Vegas, you know his historical baselines. He's typically one of the worst putters on tour, so he's been gaining strokes with the putter of late. Um, it was more significant two or three months ago. Um, he's seeming to be um, cooling down with that flat stick, so it's not somebody I want to be investing in, especially when we're expecting him um, to have a few off weeks to come. Um, the irons have been excellent. Um, I obviously have a little bit of concerns with his ability to keep the ball in play. I mean, obviously to even score when he does so. So at 14% ownership, he's an easy fade for me at the Wyndham Championship. At number two, we have Tommy Fleetwood. He's $9,700, only going to be owned in about 12.19% of lineups, but he's also somebody who's not popping in my model by any means. He comes in ranked number 45 in my model out of the 152 in the field. He's also somebody that the Vegas odds market doesn't like either. He's 45 to 1 to win. Uh, obviously, you can shop that a little bit. Um, but the people priced around him on DraftKings are much more in the 22, 25 to 1 range. And as a result, you're not getting as much baked in value with Tommy Fleetwood. His advanced metrics don't paint a good picture either. If we take a look at just over the last 20 rounds um, where he's had some of his best finishes of the year, um, he's still losing 0.16 shots gained approach. He's also losing putting, um, 0.1 strokes putting as well. So um, he'd be worth a few shots if he was unowned. Obviously, he's a high pedigree player. We've seen him do well internationally. Um, and on the PGA Tour, he's been far from spectacular. Um, he is garnering some ownership, so he's going to be a fade for me. And at number one, we have Hideki Matsuyama. This is the third straight week we are fading Hideki. It has not worked the last two weeks, to be completely transparent with you guys. Uh, but now he's $11,000, the most expensive he has ever been for a full field event. He's also coming in at almost 16% ownership, 15.61%. And it's honestly a spot where I, I definitely don't want to be targeting him if he's been a fade for me the last two weeks. Um, he's been putting well above his baseline, um, well better than we're used to seeing from Hideki Matsuyama. Um, but even over that stretch, uh, the last 20 rounds, he's still losing 0.89 shots gained putting. So um, he's obviously had some horrendous rounds. Uh, he tended to get away with it last week. He got away with it at the Olympics as well. Um, but he's, some, he's not somebody who's going to go out and putt you know, at this level for one, two months. Um, he's somebody who's historically one of the worst putters on tour. And at $11,000, you're really looking for somebody who checks all of the boxes. Um, I also have problems with Hideki's off the tee accuracy. He only hits about 60% of fairways. Um, you have people priced around him like Louis Usazin, um, Webb Simpson, that hit 75, even 80% of fairways. Um, they give you just as much upside to win. Um, they have around the same number in the outright betting market as well. Um, so I'll be looking to play those two instead of Hideki this week. And now for my sleeper picks. At number three, we have Doc Redman, an even seven grand, only going to be owned in 2.31% of lineups. 
Comes in ranked number 25 in my model, and I think he's a sneaky good course fit for this week. He's somebody who benefits from the lack of distance at Sedgefield Country Club. Um, Doc Redman's very straight off the tee. Uh, he's been quoted as saying in interviews that golf courses where you just have to hit fairways, he's going to play well on. Um, and that's exactly what you get this week at the Wyndham Championship. Um, despite losing 0.38 shots gained off the tee per round, he's still managing to hit over 72% of fairways, um, which is a very respectable number. Um, he's been rock solid everywhere else, though. Um, he has significant gains of 0.58 shots gained on approach and 0.22 shots gained around the green as well over those 20 rounds. And he's somebody who's going to keep himself in play. He's obviously gaining on approach. He's going to have plenty of birdie or better opportunities. It really just comes down to the flat stick. He's been a positive putter of late, um, even though that's just hardly positive. That shows a little bit of hope to come at least. Obviously, if he's ran around a positive putter, it's completely reasonable for him to go out, gain a shot or two putting over the week. And if he does so, he's going to find himself in contention. Um, I think he's a very safe play, somebody I would definitely roll out in cash game contests, but I also think he has GPP upside as well. Next up, we have Justin Rose at an even $8,000. He comes in owned 4.1% owned, and he's not somebody he's really shown up of late. You know, his last great finish was at the Masters. I mean, he still melted down, didn't end up winning that golf tournament. Um, but even over this lackluster run of play, over his last 20 rounds, um, he's still gaining 0.66 shots gained putting. Um, he's had the magical flat stick for this year. In the beginning of the year, it looked a little bit like an aberration, like he was on a little bit of a hot streak. But at this point, he has completely solidified his putting game. Um, he's also gained strokes off the tee, which for Justin Rose is something that he doesn't typically do. He's not one of the longer players on tour. Uh, but he's gone out and hit over 70% of his fairways. So at a golf course where precision is emphasized where you're looking for people that can really fill it up on the greens. Um, Justin Rose comes in as a very sneaky play at less than 5% ownership. Um, he's also one of the bubble boys this week, one of the people looking to get themselves into the FedEx Cup playoffs. I believe he needs a top 20 finish to do so, or to at least give him a chance to do so. And uh, he's obviously going to have the motivation to play. He's not going to be checking out by any means. You're going to see him grinding over every shot because he's on that bubble. He also has a very good skill set for this golf course, so I think he's worth a few shots in GPP tournaments. And at number one, we have Bubba Watson. He's a first-time player at this golf course, at this venue, and even $9,000 owned in 5.6% of lineups. And this could very well be a Bubba track. I'm just going to go out and say it right off the bat. This could be a Bubba track. He could go out and storm the field this week. Um, he tends to tear up courses that demand precision off the tee, and that doesn't really make sense when you think of Bubba Watson. He's obviously one of the longer hitters on tour, but he's also somebody who has extreme control over his driver. Um, he's comfortable moving it left to right, right to left. Um, he tends to hit even the smallest fairways. We see him hit like 60, 70% of fairways at the US Open, which is some crazy stuff. And at this golf course, I think he's going to be able to hit driver when most people are going to be clubbing down. Um, this makes him a very volatile play. Obviously, when you're hitting driver, you're opening up a lot of trouble. Um, but if he's hitting fairways, if he has that dialed in this week, he's going to have wedge into every single green, except for those par threes, I'll say that. Um, that's going to be a huge advantage. Um, we've seen that prowess over his last 20 rounds, gaining .88 shots gained off the tee per round. Um, while he hasn't had the greatest approach game, um, a lot of that's had to do um, with hitting the ball in water a few times. Uh, we've seen him do well at you know the 3M Open. We saw him do well at the Travelers as well. He was in contention in both of those golf tournaments. He kind of threw it away with a couple shots. You know, He lost his focus there at the end. Um, and that's what you get with Bubba Watson. He's a very volatile player. Somebody who, when he's clicking, he's pretty much unbeatable. And specifically, uh, you know, I mentioned the 3M Open. I, I mentioned the Travelers. TPC River Highlands, he's won three times at. That is a comp course for this week. TPC Twin Cities, where he played very well at the 3M Open. He had a top 10 his first year and finished fifth this year. So um, great course history at these comp courses. Great off the tee play. Um, and while he definitely doesn't fit my stereotypical mold for a player this week, I think he has a skill set that if he can tap into that driver is, is almost unbeatable. So um, at 5% ownership, he's definitely worth some shots in GPP tournaments. Uh, he's definitely not a cash play. I would not have him in a single entry or in a double up by any means. Um, he's extremely volatile. I want you guys to understand that. But if you're playing a GPP format, looking for high upside, maybe to take down a 200 plus thousand entry contest this is your guy you know he's going to be low owned and he has the highest upside of anyone in the field that's all i've got for this week's fades and sleeper picks 
Again, if you guys haven't already, let me know in the comments who your biggest fade this week is for a free chance at my Patreon projections. Um, if you guys end up giving me a fade that misses the cut, um, let's say he's one of the higher owned players in the slate, I'm gonna message you guys a free code for those Patreon projections. So make sure to go and enter. Um, also, if you guys haven't subscribed already, if you haven't liked this video, make sure to go ahead and do so. Um, not only does it help me out with growing the channel, it also makes sure that you guys are able to catch my content as soon as I post it in the future. So it's a win-win. Make sure to go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Um, without further ado though, guys, good luck with your contests. Um, you can obviously comment here if you guys have any questions. Um, I always recommend that you guys join that Patreon page. Again, it's only a dollar. It's, it's a crazy good value. You get access to my projections for every player in the field. So not just the guys I talk about in my videos. Um, the link for that is also in the description. Um, so see you guys next week. And again, let me know in the comments who your biggest fave is.